running. <laughs> um, where did I stop with the, it was this here as an example. Okay, so, so this, this, this thing here, you can still put it somewhere. Uh, you can map this to uh, a Grassmannian because you can look, well, let me say how, how, how the problem will be solved. Uh, if I can find some eraser. So how will this be solved? If I have over a point, something like here, I have a subscheme Z inside P2 over K, and this Z will be of one of these types, right? Three points, two points with a nil potent, or a one point with a bit more nil potent, or one point just ugly like that. We know that we can, yeah, so what you do is you can say, well, I have the ideal of Z inside, um, inside the structure sheaf of the P2 over K. And I want to say, well, I can describe such, a, such an embedded scheme by equations, right? But I just need more equations than the, the, the code I mentioned, but I can still do it. So I can just say, but, but to see the equations, you have to decide on which degree you want to have the equations. And if you take equations of degree one, then these three points will not put independent conditions always. They can be on one line, for example, and then you have, uh, then they would, yeah, they would give me only one equation of degree one. So you have to take equations of higher degree so that these three points or these degenerate cases in, impose the right number of conditions on the functions to vanish. So that starts, you twist this by two, like that, and you have this, well, here you have, of course, as a quotient, this O of Z, now twisted by two, and now you take the H0, right? Okay? So you say you can take, uh, maybe I do this, gamma, well, gamma, um, P2, well, H0, yeah, H0, P2K, with this IZ twisted by 2. I claim this goes inside this, this is a fixed thing, right? This is XYZ homogeneous polynomials of degree 2. And I claim that because this, this is now a, a scheme of length 3 and the conditions are independent, this has dimension, well, this has dimension 6 anyway. You can imagine the, polyno the, the monomials, and I claim this has dimension three because it's six minus three. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe me? It is the three that is that is this three, right? I mean, six is here, three is here. Yeah. This six minus that three is this three. <laughs> yeah, three minus three is six. So you map this to the Grassmannian of uh, six. And, and the claim is then that it will take a long argument to show that this map, and actually all of them, if you take this number two big enough in other situations, this will be uh, uh, locally closed immersion. And then, and so it's isomorphic to a subscheme of this, and to, and that you have to, yeah. And that is what proves the representability, right? Yeah, you can, well, maybe I, I'm a bit loose with this. I say here we have a, a fun term, but I talk about maps to a scheme as if they were really morphisms of schemes. So I'm going to say something about that too, I think, the relative representability. Uh, for now, I need some more space. <coughs> this is, so so now, so yeah. I guess this is something you could really make explicit if you take a lot of time. Uh, that number that you yeah, need I mean to take. Yeah, the way you I think here the map is perfectly clear. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, but also you, you come with your ideal, yeah. I twist it two up, and I take so I say, well, you take your sub scheme, I say, well, which degree two polynomials are zero on it? Oh, I think this is clear, but I mean yeah. also to see what you get, what, what sub scheme. Ah, yeah, that, that is difficult. I think nobody knows. Oh, nobody knows. Okay, yeah, this no. is really hard. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, that's good to know. Nobody knows. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Then, uh, yeah, but we're going to do two steps, huh? so two main steps in the proof 
because we are after the proof of this theory, right? So two big steps. And the first is a reduction, a reduction to something. Well, of course, we no longer talk about the Hilbert scheme, only about quad schemes. And actually, that allows us to forget x. Because here, we want to do pi upper star of p. So actually, I'll, I'll explain over the projective bundle of some vector bundle over s over s and phi some Hilbert <coughs> polynomial. So we want to only do it for those, right? So the, the, the proof goes in two steps. The one, the first step is reduction to this. So this is my paragraph uh, three, I think now. And then the, the next one. So I'll describe the, the situation. Here, s is a scheme. And e and b are locally free OS modules. Trivial, uh, free if you like, but then you get a not a strong theorem of finite constant rank. Okay? And pi will be the structure morphism of this projective space bundle. And uh, I will take x, let x be a closed subscheme of this part of P of this projective space bundle uh, of finite presentation. S, so those are both. Oh, and now I still need an F because I want to reduce the general situation to that, right? So here I think. We had the general situation, and here we had a quote of x over x over s, and this x was already inside some yeah. projective space bundle, right? I think here it was strongly projective in that sense, so it was in such a thing. So this is actually the same situation, uh, and f maybe as in the theorem, right? As in the theorem. Uh, okay. So here, uh, yeah, and, and so here is a theorem. Um, well, maybe I should first say so we want to reduce the representability of the quad scheme that is here in this situation to the one that is mentioned here in the title where the variety has just become, there is no x anymore. There is just a nice projective space bundle. So the geometry is no longer complicated, right? The, the idea of this step is to, to just get rid of the geometry. It's not so good for algebraic geometers. The geometry has gone after that step. We just have a projective space bundle. Right? Uh, and, and the theorem is that, that if you look at quad so there is this morphism of functors that says that if I take, well, I, I'll say what it does. Um, there is one here that to quote phi. Actually, so if x, yeah, no, uh, let me just first write this. Phi over star b over the p of e over s. Uh, how does this work, right? So maybe I'll erase a bit more. So the x is a closed subscheme of this p of e. So that means that ox already is a quotient of uh, yeah. Actually, the ox, the f is a quotient of this thing, and this thing lives on on p of e. So f. So you just use here that, that f x is a closed subscheme of p of e. Here I have this pi upper star of p twisted by nu, say, and here I have my, yeah, I have the pullback of this, right? Here I have the same restricted to x, and then I have this quotient to f. And so f is also a quotient 
of this, right? This is the, I have a closed immersion, this is a surjection, and then I have that. So quotients of F, if I have something like I base change to some T, everything is base changed over some T, then this goes to some G, then, then this is also a quotient of that guy. That's the map. Right? You just say, if you give me a quotient of a quotient, then it is a quotient. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe, I mean, maybe later. <laughs> a quotient of a quotient is a quotient. Yeah, that is what this map does. It's and that is yeah compatible with pullback. So uh, and the claim is that this this is a morphism of functors, right? I, I'm trying to prove that they are schemes, but they are functors. So here. This is, uh, the, the, the theorem says this is represented by closed inversions. And what does that mean? So I, I promised to say a little bit about that. So that means that if you take a scheme T, and you, you remember Yoneda, right? Yoneda says the category of schemes is embedded in the category of con contravariant functors from schemes to sets. This is such a functor. So T is also, yeah, it's, it's the home functor to T. And if I have an arrow like this, the Yoneda lemma says to give a morphism of functors from T to that, it is the same as to give a, to, to, to release this functor on T. That is the set of maps from T to that. So this arrow is itself just given by a Q, right? This is, uh, here I have, uh, what is it here is a Q, and this Q, well, I have a T to S. Yeah, I have it already, right? <laughs> so, so what is this Q? Um, it is a map from, it is an element in this, in this functor, so it is a map from P upper star B uh, twisted by, no, I just take a quotient of this, right? So pull back to T or to X, well, to the P of E over T, right? So maybe I should write that for once. P of E over T quotient to some G. Right? And what does it say that, that uh, this, I can take the fiber product in the category of uh, functors, contravariant functors from schemes to set. Then I get here a kind of functor P, right? And saying that this morphism of functors is a closed inversion means that for every T and for every Q I take here, it's such a thing, that this functor here is, this is a scheme, is a scheme, and this morphism of schemes is a closed inversion. And now maybe you would like to know what is this function? Well, you have to work out uh, <laughs> the product of the fiber product. But it's, it's just... It's just really for every scheme T and every yeah. map yeah. Yeah. factors? Yeah, you, you, you will have that this is a scheme and this morphism is then uh, a morphism is a closed inversion. And basically, it says that if you, if I take any quotient here, right? Say here I have a H, then I would like to know over which subset of T it factors through this one, through the F, right? That is what I would like to know because I said when a quotient of a quotient is a quotient, so a quotient of F is a quotient of this one. A quotient of F is a quotient of this. But now I would like to know, given a quotient of this one, over which locus of T does it factor through this given quotient? And the, the claim is that that is a, a exactly given by a closed subscheme of T. There is a closed subscheme of T that is universal for, for quotients of this, well, given this, uh, maps to T over after pullback to which this map factors through F. Yeah. That's the that's the, the statement there, and um, well, that is quite technical, I'm afraid. So, what do I want to say about that? Yeah, maybe I should say it concretely. 
both improved becomes technical, but this is still easy. There exists a closed subscheme. Uh, Z of T, such that for every T prime to T, and this does not need to be any immersion kind of thing, such that the Q pulled back to T prime, right? This Q pulled back by that base change. Factors, oh, such that, no, okay. I should say there is an equivalent. Q T prime factors through uh, F of T prime, if and only if T prime to T factors through Z. Okay, that is, there is a closed subscheme like that that has this property. And uh, yeah, the notes give a sketch of a proof of that. I'm not so sure that I want to do that. But does the proof use a lot about P of E, or can you start out with any closed well, immersion X into Y? No, the proof, the proof, okay, I can give you, I can say something. So what does the proof it? It's a bit, it's, it says, uh, so you have, so, so we have this Q, right? that, is, that is given here. So I have that, that, that kind of quotient. I have pi upper star of V, and then uh, T, and I have I have this this f of t was also a quotient. I have my q. This goes to g, right? If I use the right letters, and I have a kernel here, kernel, right? And and now this map is my interesting map here. I have injection q composed with i. I want to know now. So now I have this 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 this. What I have is this. Where does this live? Well, this lives on P of E over T, right? And, uh, and this goes to T. I want to know over which subset of T this map is zero, right? I want to have the vanishing locus on T, the points of T on, over which this map is zero on the fiber over T, over that point. And that is, um, yeah. So you so then you get a Grothendieck kind of proof that says that well you have just one map here but you have of course to look at all maps as a as 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 a, as a functor <coughs> in schemes over t so you have a you can pull back you, you can take the home from this to this as a functor of t that he says is representable and then you have a zero section of that and you have this section and the locus where they intersect that is what you are after. Yeah. It is again a proof by generalization. Somehow you yeah, okay. My notes they, they give you that and they give references where this is proved. Um, what is really behind this in the end? So so behind it, that maybe I want to say, is the, the, the theory of cohomology and base change. And that, that is a, a great tool uh, that is useful anyway. <laughs> so um, it says uh, if you have a coherent sheaf on the projective space, say, a coherent sheaf, uh, you can first push it forward, and you can take the higher push forwards, and you can ask how does it relate to, to, to pulling back to some T prime pulling back here and pushing forward there. How do these two things relate? And that, that you want to know anyway, very often. And so the, and actually that is a bit funny. You have this book, uh, uh, FGA Explained, and this is mentioned as a theorem, but there is no reference given. So the reference, I give it in the notes, it's to Mumford Abelian Varieties. There you find it. So see Mumford. Abelian varieties, I think, paragraph five or so. Yeah, and Bosch, Lutke, Bomer, Renault, they also give, a, well, it's in my notes. I get that. But, uh, so then, uh, okay. 
Christians? You would? This is not just about flat base changes. Hmm? No, 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 definitely not. Because if you do a flat base change, then. So maybe I should say something about that. Suppose you have, say, here Pn, okay? Over some scheme S and here uh, S and I and uh, pi. And here I have a sheet F. How do we compute maybe here spec of A, okay, to make it just easier than this is Pn over A? And I want to write what the cohomology of F is. So I take a check resolution. Right? And I want that F, F is flat over A, huh? F flat over A. So that you will see later. Uh, so you have a check resolution, eh? so you have um, check 0 of f goes to check 1 of f goes to, and then it ha the last one is maybe you need n plus 1 opens to cover pn, right? Yeah? <laughs> this is the, the check complex, right? So for example, this This uh, CI of F is, uh, yeah, it's the product. Or maybe I want to have R. I1, because I have to, to restrict, I take the sections of, uh, yeah, how, PN is covered by these basic opens, right? U0 to UN. And now here I take u i1 up to i r, right? And i1 less less than i r, right? So that is the that is what goes in the check complex, right? And and u i is the i basic open of of uh, affine open of, of pn. So this and then you have these d maps, right? I mean, uh, why did I I should have put some points, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. So the, you can take the, the. This is a complex of A modules, and actually flat A modules, right? Because I suppose that F was flat over A. So if I take the sections of some F fine, I get some flat A modules. And it, and its cohomology in degree i is the H i of this sheaf. It's the i push forward. So H I of what well, the maybe yeah I can say H I of this F is the I cohomology group of this complex right C dot of F. That's very nice. And if I do a flat base change, then yeah, then if this stays around right, well, then the, the the check complex, well, then, then taking the cohomology, of course, what you should say is if you take a base change, any base change, say to a spec of B, then you can tensor all these things with B, and you get the check resolution after the base change. So you get that. But but the the, the point is that if you do a flat base change, then also that commutes with taking the cohomology of the complex. Because that is an exact function. But you want to know something about when it is not flat. Uh, and then, so the whole point is that this complex is quasi isomorphic. You can make a much nicer complex here with, say, uh, kn plus 1 to kn k0 with near maps. Commute with the differentials, so there exists a complex like this with the ki uh, finitely present, finitely presented projective projective a modules, and such that this map here induces an isomorphism in the cohomology, so that is a quasi isomorphism. And that is the whole theory of cohomology and base change. So you get into a much nicer situation. These, these as a modules, they are infinite dimensional, say, because I take polynomial rings. 
right? But, but you can make it knowing that the cohomology of this complex is finally generated as A module. That is because the cohomology of a coherent sheet on projective space has that property. You can deduce that it is isomorphic to this. And this is not a difficult thing. Just, uh, and it's very useful. If, for example, you can dualize this. They are all free. You, you can dualize again, you're back. Um, many things go very well. And it is used very much. OK. So. Then it is time, I think, to go to the next step. Right? So we have reduced, the geometry is gone. We just have quotient. We have a projected space over some base and some vector number on it that comes from the base. And we have to do the quads of that. Right? And I think that it's time then to stop the movie.